What's up guys and gals, welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're going to be checking out Sands of Salzar. This game is very early on in kind of like early access, I guess. So like this is one of those games that at the beginning I'm going to give you a bit of a waiver. It's still being worked on and in like zero ways is it a typical game. This game is weird. Like it's a very, very odd game. But the best way that I can describe it to you is that it's kind of like a real time top down Diablo style action RPG battler. And it's got like this odd world combination. Uh, I guess it's not that odd. It's like a big Chinese, it's like a, it's like a big giant Chinese desert where you're fighting over essentially control of the desert. Uh, you can control cities. You can set up stewards to control those cities for you and run them and raise their own armies. Many of the same things you can do in Mountain Blade you can do in this game. The difference is that there's an overmap and when you run into enemies, you don't really fight like a, like a battle in the sense of Mountain Blade Warband, you fight almost like a Diablo 2 style battle where you go in with like all these hack and slash abilities and you go through and sort of battle with all of the enemy I guess and like you've got a bunch of minions going with you that are doing the same thing. So I, I guess it's kind of similar to playing a necromancer in Diablo 2. It's just that all your skeletons and your ghosts and everything else are human beings with their own skill trees and their own gear and their own armor and everything else. We're gonna dive on in today. I think the game is interesting. It's getting an English translation for right now. I've had it on my wish list now for probably about a year. But the game has only been in Chinese, uh, so you haven't been able to play it. Uh, they've been diligently working on the English translation. In some places it can be a little bit rough and you can definitely tell that it's been translated, especially with some of the UI elements. But bear in mind, the game is still being worked on. It's going to get better with time. They're still adding things and fiddling with things. This is the first beta access to the English version of the game. So obviously we're going to run into some bugs. We're going to run into some translational things or, you know, missing periods and stuff like that. Let's start a new game. Uh, we're going to do open world mode. And we're going to get to create our character, which can be... They have returned. There was a war 20 years ago. That war took my father, my mother, my homeland, everything. The black sun rose in the sky, heralding destruction. You've protected mankind for a thousand years. Who am I to judge? But it all started with you. Now, I will be the one to finish it. Alright, so here we are. After our little cutscene, uh, we get to pick what we want our character to be. Uh, we've got a number of classes here that we can pick in between. We've got everything from a spirit mancer, uh, which is effectively like a wizard. Uh, they're sort of like an illusionist almost, too. They use all kinds of like shadow abilities and kind of deceptions and things of that nature. This is the only class that I've had a chance to fiddle around with. I played for about an hour before I recorded this video. Because you guys know, I do first impressions videos, but I do like to get my feet wet a little bit so that I'm not like stumbling with the UI and whatnot if I can help it. And I had a feeling this game was going to be complicated. Uh, we've got the Jackal who is apparently a bounty hunter. We're as stealthy as the Hashishin. Cool, and we can apparently summon other bounty hunters so I can train up recruits to become fellow bounty hunters. Nice, cool. Uh, but we can't learn magic, all we can do is fight. We've got the shaman. All right. So I guess we are a shapeshifter. The black sun brought its curse. Oh, I kind of like that idea right there. That'd be kind of cool. I'm a big sucker for shaman, dude. I can't help it. Oh, we've got the Knight Errant over here, who I assume is just kind of a warrior. Oh, cool. Apparently, we can learn one branch of magic to go along with our fighting skills if we go with the Knight or, like, the Swordsman. And we have the Blade Dancer over here. We have a Hashishin, which is obviously an assassin. We have the Berserker, which is this big boy right here. And we've got a Sentinel, who is apparently, like, a member of the Town Guard is what it looks like to me. Yeah, from a city right there. Uh, we can be a sultan, or the prince of a sultan. 
Uh, we can be a bounty hunter down here. I don't know how that's different from the jackal. Yeah. I guess it starts out like it's, it must be somewhat similar, but different in its own way. This guy looks like he comes with homies. This guy over here looks like he starts with homies as well. Okay. What does the shaman start with? We got wild wolves that were separated from the pack, and they've taken... Dude, I have to do it, man. I have to do it. Uh, now we get our legacy, which is... This is like the custom way that we build our character. And in fact, the game actually has kind of a roguelite bent to it, too. Like, I don't know if it's... So if I go back, does it change? Yeah, 61 right there. So you get legacy points, like from doing various things while you're playing the game. Like, I unlocked a legacy point while I was testing the game out. And it allows you to start with more stuff the next time you go through. So I'm not exactly sure what happens when you die. I actually didn't get a chance to test it out. I was going to throw my test character at a wall of enemies and just kind of see what happened afterwards. But I kind of forgot to do it in my excitement of making a video. So here we are, professionalism. With our character, we can take an ability down here. These abilities are very, very expensive, but they tend to be kind of like game-changing and like really, really good. Uh, so we can take like charge, which allows us to blast through the enemy if we wanted to. We can take everything from that to strength boost. We can become like a bounty hunter tree. I mean, there's all kinds of things in here. I never quite know what I want to take. Enchanted Blade is kind of a cool idea, although I see myself as more of like a club guy. Like a big-ass club, or like a big old battle axe to go along with the fact that I'm a shaman. We've got Demonic Sword, which gives an attack bonus to all of our allies within 500 cubits. Man, that's a, that's a, that's a measurement I haven't heard in some... If you don't know how long a cubit is, it's from your elbow to the tip of your middle finger. It's an old biblical measurement that Noah used to build the Ark. I grew up religious, that's the only reason I know that, but anyways, a cubit, there you go, cubits. The problem with a cubit is that everybody has a different forearm, so not super great for for showing people how to build other things, but you know, um, I'll probably go, I'm gonna go with Blacksmith's Rage, actually, that sounds pretty cool, it's an AoE. As far as our squad goes, if we had a few more points, we could pick up some extra people to follow us around. But it looks like we have to find these guys and unlock them in the world by doing their personal quests in order to add them to our starting legacy if we wanted to. So unfortunately, we don't have that. We can also take some items out here. Uh, we can get prestige. Not super sure what prestige does. Uh, we can get money. I would suggest that we get some money, and it's one point per hundred dollars. And how much do we have left? Twenty-one. I'll take 500 bucks. We'll get five Sherpas so that we can carry five more items. And then we will take... Oh, I don't know. Maybe like... One of these guys. Strength Potion. Wow, that increases the Arcane of somebody by 30. That's wild. A little bit of stamina right there. Okay. We get our resource cash, I guess. Yeah, instead of this, let's get the resource cash. There we go. Take a cache of resources, so we'll get 100 Utah, 50 wood, and 50 iron. Sounds like a decent call. And then with our extra point that we have left over, we'll just add an extra 100 bucks. There you go. Nothing to be worried about with money. There's also modifiers that you can go with down on in here. I haven't played a whole lot of them yet, but they all seem to be unlockable. And so anyways... Uh, you can make the game harder, give you less legacy points, stuff like that. Limit the amount of troops you can have. Things of that nature, and it'll give you extra bonus points. But we have to unlock it first, so unfortunately we we can't get any of this stuff. We'll dive on in. So here's our character. He's already out here looking like a shaman. Why my care? Okay, we'll be a dude for sure. That's a pretty badass looking like shaman look right there. I like the, I like the kind of Magnum PI mustache we got going on too. Uh, what different heads do we have around here? I'm going to customize my character. Just give me a minute. Alright, that's pretty much what I got right there. I feel like we're looking pretty good. There's a lot of body styles to choose from and a lot of, like, your character is actually fairly customizable. Not all of the trinkets and everything actually, like, fit on your character's face. Like, sometimes they stick off the side or whatever. But you can make a fairly customized character. So we're going to go with this guy right here. Uh, he looks fairly generic. One thing I always like about, like, games that are made in, like, China or Japan is I love the way, or, like, Korea, I love the way that, like, there's options to have your character look like a scholar or somebody who's clearly, like, doing calligraphy or someone who's, like, effectively, like, a member of the Illuminated class, like, the scholar class. And, like, in other games when they present that, they always make them kind of weak and effete looking. 
but like in, in in games from like Korea or games from like China or whatever, I always like the fact that like Scholar is like a perfectly valid option, and it's always presented to the player in like a respectable way. I don't know if you guys have ever noticed that, but I but I find that with like a lot of stuff, they make the they either don't have like a Scholar, you're more of a wizard or whatever, in Western stuff. And if there is a scholar, they're always like, eh, and they're always worried about getting their boots dirty. Like, they're always worried about traveling or whatever. I don't know. Whenever whenever I consume media from other places, it seems like it's a valid option to be a scholar or, like, an educated, um, a, a studious individual, I guess. And, and the way other characters react to them is with, like, respect. You know, like, I, I kind of like that, in all honesty. Uh, we got to choose what we look like on the world map right now. And I don't super know what I want to look like. I mean, obviously, we got to have the wolf head on, right? Because we're a druid, so I guess I'll go with that right there. Although, I don't have a wolf hat on, dude. Like, I can put on a wolf hat so that I match better, but then I'll lose my sweet-ass mohawk, dude. So, like, I can put on a wolf hat right there, or, like, a fox hat, but... Like, it makes me match, and I kind of like to match my, my portrait, but still. Like, I was kind of I was kind of digging my sweet-ass mohawk, so I think I'm going to keep it. Now, I just got to throw a name on in here. Uh, I'm gonna name him Dogbro5000. Aw, oh, dude, it's got... Alright, never mind then. There we go, we got it covered. Uh, we're gonna leave all this how it is, and then we're just gonna dive on into the game. Alright, you struggle to open your eyes. The sunlight has pierced them. You're in a daze while you hear people chatting about things like humans and leopards. You lean your head and stand up with difficulty, and the people surrounding you take a step back. You try to jolt your own memory, but you can't recall anything except for the phrase Bork Bro. You feel like you've heard the phrase countless times and you finally realize it's your name. You catch a glimpse of someone's lips moving like he was saying your name, but you look up and he's already turned in the direction of Redstone Valley and left. Alright, well there- Oh, dude, I got dogs? Nice, man. I'm so stoked about that. Are they good? Let me take a look at my dogs out here. We got a Badlands Wolf. Dude, he's got so much HP. Nice, man. Can I name him? I'm gonna name them Digfried and Destroy. This, that's my mental, that's my headcanon right now. Alright, come on, Digfried, let's go. Uh, what do we have over here? A Traveler. You're new here, right? Maybe I can answer some of your questions. Um, nah, I think I'm good. I don't think I need to talk to you. Uh, so what you need to do right now is there's a caravan up the road, and if you go to the caravan, it'll take you wherever you want to go, and then you'll be on your first open map, and you can just start sandboxing around. You hear faint calls for help carried on the wind. It gets stronger and the sound becomes clearer and after a while you can finally see the owner of the voice. It's a middle-aged man in ragged clothes carrying an old staff and he grasps a masked woman's hand and runs desperately, chasing him as a group of humanoid monsters ensconced in flame. Help! Save me! Before you can respond, the creatures made of living fire rush towards you with cruel intent. I don't think I equipped my weapon or anything, so we might not actually be able to fight. Yeah, I just got like fisticuffs right now. How are my dogs doing though? Oh wow, we get more than oh, it's not just dig feed and dig feed and destroy. It's a bunch of wolves, dude. Like we have a gaggle of wolves that are kicking it with us right now. Like a lot of them. Well, thank you for your help. Can I ask the name of my benefactor? Bork bro. My name is Malak and I'm a scholar. He points to the masked woman. She's Isra, an orphan that I picked up in Twin Luna Valley. She was interested in my studies, so I took her with me. What do you study? Ah, in an age of war, it seems like a useless profession, no? But I'm studying the history of the land, not the old empire or the Machina age, but something very obscure. As long as you're okay. These monsters appeared after the black sun rose in the sky, and they appear human. They even have human faces because their bodies are covered in flame. We call them the Ifrit. Why did they attack you? If you're lucky, you'll never encounter one. Ifrit are violent by nature. They especially like to attack humans, human mages in particular. This kind of weak Ifrit isn't self-aware, but it's said more powerful Ifrit are smaller than a human, though I don't know if that's true or not. Thank you, and please accept this token of our gratitude. You really are a kind person. The area ahead is dangerous, and I really suggest that you proceed with caution. There we go. Mat or Malak and Isra express their gratitude, and then they continue upon their journey. You discover that the Ifrit deteriorate very, very quickly. Like burned charcoal, they fall apart bit by bit until they're finally blown away in the wind. The Battle of the Black Sun has made this world unrecognizable, but people have never stopped fighting it. The appearance of such a monster is unlikely to change anybody's dreams of conquest. You brace your head against the wind and press forward. 
Nice. Okay, so there's the caravan leader right there. I should have jumped in here. Apparently, I could have an iron knife and also some shabby clothing if I really wanted to. I also have two big-ass bags of beans. I love beans. Sometimes I just make a giant, like, pot of refried beans, and then I just eat that with, like, some Mexican shreddy cheese on top of it. Like, that's it. I just eat it with a spoon. That's it. Sometimes if I'm feeling really, really, really super, you know, if I'm feeling optimistic and I'm having a good day, maybe I'll put it on some tortilla chips or, like, onto a tortilla, but I don't know. At the end of the valley, you see a caravan preparing to head out into the desert. They're willing to take you with them and give you a trade permit. Nice. Okay, well, Redstone Valley is recommended, so let's go there. And this is going to be our first sandbox area that we can just wander around in. Uh, there is no story. You will find quests, and you will find things to work on, like, while you're on this map. So, you know, keep an eye out, wander around, click on things, discover stuff. This is in every way, like, a big-time sandbox game. Uh, so don't expect the game to give you a whole lot of, like, direction. Where does that go right there? This goes to Crying Rock. Okay. Doesn't look like I can do anything with the well right there. The lightning is coming, like, dangerously close to my face every single time that it goes off, and it kind of worries me. Looks like there's a treasure chest over here, so I'll pick that up. A Rage Elixir. What does that do? Rage Elixir. We get a boost to our crit rate. Okay. Is it like a trinket? Oh, I put it on my keys like that. Gotcha. So we've got a Desert Tracker's Scroll. Greatly increases movement and attack speed of allies within a large range. Okay. I don't have enough Utah to hire troops, but I don't know if fighting. I know fighting alone is too dangerous. I learned that a trainer was selling war animals, but who knew they'd be more expensive than a person? My stand is simple, and my merchandise is anything but. You want to buy something unique? I don't have any pets for sale right now. Please come back another time. All right, fair enough. Kind of bummed out about that. I was looking forward to buying, like, even more dogs because I have so many. There's a bandit right there. Let's go kick his ass. Oh, he's running from us, dude. He doesn't want the smoke. He doesn't want the smoke. Let's go get him. Yep, go, my doggos. Go. Yep. Tear them apart with your mighty diggy claws. And your terrible chomping jaws. Oh, there's another one dead right there. I'm gonna go get this one. Oh man, he's out of the way. Eh. Die. Alright, so he's been finished off. Where are the rest of them at? Sweet. We leveled up. I like leveling up. I also want that stone right there, so I'm gonna take it. Perfect. Uh, what is this right here? This is a bandit lair. Can I do anything with it? So recommended level is three. There's one floor and we have to fight enemies. Let's do it. You pull out your weapon and approach the bandits quietly. Nice. Ooh, I like how we got, like, dog metal right now. Yup, dog bro metal. I like it. Hopefully we don't lose too many dogs in this, like, scuffle. I'm trying to eliminate enemies about as fast as possible right now. It looks like they kind of shuffle around a little bit. Some of the dogs are getting, like, tag-teamed on, though, and I don't very much like that. Like, I don't want them to get overwhelmed by multiple enemies. There's one down right there keep fighting over here. How are my guys doing? Like, is there like an overall health check I can look at to figure out like whether or not my dogs are dying? I gotta save this dog over here. He's getting chewed on. Like, I'm trying to run him off the map, but... Are we done here? We get them all? How are the rest of the dogs doing? Everybody okay? We lose any hounds? Dude, that's what I'm talking about. Four, dude, we got so much XP from that. Hell yeah. You eliminate the bandits and have taken their loot for yourself. So we got 65 bucks, some wood. I like it. Oh, nice, we hit level two. All right, well, let me go pick up these flowers over here. Let's see here, you can't respawn after being it's been, you have to wait 14 days before we can hit that again. Okay, sounds good. Apparently the bandits are like hella dumb and they'll just like come back. Uh, we can go to our skills right here. We can take a look. So we have slam over on this side. Slam yourself in the target direction, which will deal all, it'll deal damage to enemies in 500 cubits. I get 10% of the health that I have dealt as health and knock back all of those enemies. While in beast mode, health recovered is 20% of damage dealt. I don't know if I have beast mode, though, yet. Do I have beast mode? Oh, there's drag. Ooh, apparently I can become a dragon or something with my shape-shifting. Let's see here. 
So I guess as I attack, I eventually fill up a meter, and once I fill up that meter, I go into beast mode. And I just, like, bang on him, you know what I mean? Oh, with our legacy down here, we have seismic shock, but I didn't realize we were going to get an ability just like it. Right there, what does that do? Crunch? I'll put that over there. Bite the enemy to deal damage. In a semicircle shape in front of you, and I get health back from it, too. Yeah, let's diversify. I want to have, like, multiple abilities. So we've got Q and we've got W right now. I'm actually going to put these on E, and I'm going to put them on... Let's go with F right there. That sounds good. All right, so we've leveled up. My dogs are still leveling up as well. They've already hit level 6, and if we can find some ironstone, we can upgrade them to the next level right here, which is an elite Badlands Wolf, which adds a lot of HP. Like, they get a ton of HP from leveling up, so... Might not be a bad idea... All right, let's go find some more trouble to get into. We spent a lot of time doing like character creation and not a whole lot of time playing, and I'm actually kind of stoked. Uh, we can buy a brown horse right here, but I gotta be level three. I guess it probably helps me move around a little bit faster. We have 1,500 bucks, but I'm not like super antsy about spending it right now. What is this? Some prisoners are being held in a makeshift cell. Defeat the guards and the prisoners will join you. You must be discreet and thus you can only use your heroes. Oh, uh, so my dogs aren't heroes. They're kind of like minions or whatever. So we can't bring them in for that fight. I feel like we're probably going to get like rogue stomped on. Hey, who are you guys? Are you guys like good? You guys haven't heard of the famous Desert Brotherhood? Nope, must not be that famous. Hand over your valuables if you want, a value or if you want your life. All right, well, let's fight then. Let us go to war. I want to try out some of these new abilities here. Oh, that was pretty sweet. Definitely liked that. Damn, dude. We're like ducking and diving and just killing out here. That was easy peasy. That almost took no effort. Uh, looks like we've got a, a shoddy harp. Okay, your basic attacks will be musical, I guess. Looks like it's a magical weapon, so it's probably for, like, mages and scholars or something. If we're like the guy with the harp from... Oh, dude, what was that movie? Uh, was that Kung Fu Hustle? Was that the one where the guy had the harp? And, like, he would he would play the harp and it would fire sound waves at you that would, like, cut buildings in half? God, Kung Fu Hustle was such a good movie. That and Shaolin Soccer, they were both amazing. I don't want to talk to these guys because I feel like they're going to jump me. Are they going to jump me? You guys are going to jump me, huh, when I come in here. Hey, where did this bum come from? Scram. What do you want to do? Thought this was America, bro. I don't know how strong they're going to be, so we'll just relax for a minute until we kill off a couple more straggler groups. Like, we do have a pretty strong team right now because of the dogs. They're pretty tough. But, like, what do we have going on down here? Nice. A few more flowers and things. I don't know if we're going to sell those. There's a wolf pack down here. This might not work out so great. Never mind. We did pretty good. Maybe we get like a puppy or something out of that. No, no puppy. All right, fair enough. I, I was hoping maybe we get a puppy, but I, I guess, you know, no puppy. Bandits abound. Yeah, let's go for it. There's another gathering of bandits right here. Let's take them out. You pull out your weapon and approach them quietly. Dude, the music is kind of hype, man. Dude, I'm so strong. Oh, my God. I'm only, like, level two, and I am straight wrecking face right now. Like, I got AoEs for a minute. Hey, we leveled up again, too. Bork Bro grows a little bit stronger. Oh, we got the Iron Stone that we needed as well, or at least some of the Iron Stone that we needed. What do we do with all this other stuff? So, Jade goes right there. I'm assuming that's, like, really, really valuable. I don't really want to use the harp because I'm not, like, particularly magical, I don't think. I think I can take a look and view my details here. I seem to be kind of an even split. Like, I, I seem to be like a jack-of-all-trades, in all honesty, right now. Like, I seem to have even stats and everything. So somehow, instead of making a jack-of-all-trades, I, without knowing, picked the jack-of-all-trades like I always do. What's up with this guy over here? What's he doing? I've come back to see you. Traveler, my brother was killed here during the Battle of the Black Sun. He was a brave, brave man. Do you know your letters, Traveler? I need someone to help me write down my brother's story so that more people can know of his exploits. You do know letters? That's great. His story is long. I hope it's okay. 
Would you like to hear the soldier's tale from a long time past? Uh, yeah, why not? Thank you, Traveler. I will tell this story to you in exquisite detail. Not just normal detail, exquisite detail. We were brothers in arms who met during the Battle of the Black Sun. I was conscripted by the Oryx as a rank-and-file soldier. Hey, you must be new around here. Hello. Hey, you don't look too well. I'm about to be sent to my death in battle. What on earth is this fool prattling about? Hey, you lot, stop chip-chatting. Come finish your training. A little bit of damage right there. I think he blocked that, man. Oh, this guy's tough. Oh, the man's a god. We got wrecked. Can't really remember, and I've got a headache. Let me take a rest. Oh, well, apparently if you lose, it cancels out his ability to kind of, like, read what's happening to you, I guess. Oh, my legacy went up. Nice. Sweet. So my next character will be a little bit doper. What does that do? The Desert Tracker's Scroll. Is this a battle area over here? What is this? Let's see. Statue of a legendary hero. Approach the statue and learn from it. There's one floor. We should be level three. Yeah, let's give it a go. Why not? The spirit of a hero appears to test your skills. Nice, dude. Let's go. Oh, he seemed kind of tough, though. It looks like I regenerate, though, a little bit, so that's good. Oh, no, dude. This man pulled out, like, the power of tornadoes on me. Okay, all right, all right. Getting stun locked, getting stun locked. It looks like I regenerate a little bit, though, so, like, I should... Does he regenerate, too, though? I'm just going to run in circles. How about that? Oh, I'm beast mode. Let's go. Damn, dude. Even in beast mode, I'm getting, like, styled on right now. Like, I'm, I'm legit getting, like, ham-hocked right now. It's ugly. Yeah, he regenerates too, so I don't think this is going to go super great for me. Yeah, with all of his, like, little things that he can use to, cut, like, catch me up and, like, destroy me, dude. I don't know. It's tough. No! The heroic spirit has let me go in peace. Suddenly, you hear someone's name calling to you. The weariness in the person's voice sounds familiar. You don't remember me, my benefactor? It's me! You saved me from the Ifrit. You haven't forgotten this troubled scholar. He puts away his old tomes and takes your hand. My benefactor, I found you. I'm in desperate need of your help. You must know how powerful the Ifrit are. They've recently begun to attack humans in groups. If the rumors are true, the most powerful Ifrit are nearly indistinguishable from humans, except for superficial differences. They have their own language, intelligence, powerful magic. They evolve and adapt quickly, too, and if this continues, humans will be unable to defeat them. What do you want me to do? I found a base for them. They seem to be planning a shameful conspiracy. The Pahoyhoy Lava Void to the south of the Redstone Keep is where I'll wait for you. Only you can prevent disaster, hero. And also forest fires, according to Smokey. Uh, Malak seems so earnest that there is no refusing. He staggers awkwardly away. Pahoyhoy is a real thing, too. Pahoyhoy is smooth lava. Smooth, ropey lava. And then Ah uh -uh is the pointy lava. It's all spiky and unpleasant. Sharp. A more prestige. More prestige. More prestige for the splatty. Get some limestone flowers out. We're going to buy some food pretty soon, too, I think. What is this? Nothing? See, there's another one of the parties running around right there. That's one of the AI parties that's trying to, like, control the cities and stuff. And so, like, later on, we'll have a big army just like him. Oh, yeah. There's a place with books on combat strategy over there. He's got a quest for an abandoned redstone mine that we can check out. Let's see what's up with the keep. So what can I do over here? Uh, it looks like there's a keep and it's full of guys. Is there any way? Oh, I've got to be the city administrator first. I was hoping there was a place where I could, like, maybe buy and, like, train people. But it looks like it's mostly skill trainers around here. I was hoping to get some food. Well, I guess we can talk to this guard. 
Identical notices have been posted on the wall by the guard. To the north there is a mine. You will see it if you go to the end of the canyon. After the black sun, the miners often saw ghostly fire down there. They got injured or went missing. It was abandoned. Go see for yourself if you think you can survive. So you guys want me to like clean it out, dude. We're like getting some stuff to do now. That's good. I'm gonna try to get this bandit over here too because you can never you can never get enough XP. Even if it's like an easy fight that we're steamrolling our way through. There you go, just get somebody in here. Another one bites the dust. Nice. A little bit more XP. I don't think that leveled me up, but hey. Apparently the Brotherhood is not a fan of us. What is this right here? My stand is simple. Want to buy something? Yeah, let's see. You've got a python hatchling for 166. Do you want it? Yeah, sure. Why not? Dude, I got like a snake now. That doesn't look like a python. That's a cobra, dude. That's like a cobra. Like, you got to watch out. I don't mess around with snakes, dude. I don't even know why I did this. I don't even believe in snakes. I treat I treat snakes like like Santa Claus, dude. Come on, there we go. I want the snakes to level up. I bet they can become more badass. Oh, we got a short bow too. That's pretty sweet. And my wolf leveled up. Wolves getting a little bit stronger. They reassessed your strength. They can't take you on with a group this size. Yeah, they should kind of think about that. Like these guys are basically like the looters of the game. They scatter and flee. Aw, oh, dude, I was gonna fight them though. Why are the poor always the most hired in this godforsaken world? Can I hire you guys? I need to figure out how I can hire some guys. That's what I really need to figure out. We got messages. What messages do we have? Markets will open soon. Oh, okay. Fair enough. Uh, what's going on down here? Who are you? And what are you doing? I mean, I got a snake, so that's kind of cool. Like, worst case scenario, we can tie them both together and use them like nunchucks if we really, really have to. I don't think this bandit wants a problem, neither. I mean, we caught his ass, but... I think he's going to be somewhat unhappy about it. Are the snakes, like, magical? It doesn't look like they're actually trying to fight anybody. Looks like they're doing some kind of, like, casting or buffing or something. Hallucinating pollen. Oh, cool. We give confusion to people around us. Nice. Okay. Well, what else do we have going on here? Let me take a look at my party. So we've got... Some snakes, they're at level 2. These guys are at level 8. A little bit further, they'll be high enough level to where we can do something with them. We can take our skills over here, so we can get plus crunch or plus slam. So what does that do? Passively increases these stats, so our health will go up. Okay. That one right there makes our strength go up. I kind of want the strength, I think. And then that'll make our crit go up. Oof, that sounds pretty good, too. Alright, but we don't have anything else we can throw in for right now. Alright, we're good. Looks like there's a fight spot. Oh, that's a cave right there. What's up with the cave? A beast den in the desert. Recommended level one. Like, how bad could it be? Yeah, it seems like we're doing pretty good. There's a lot of them, which I presume will probably mean we get a lot of XP from it. So I'm excited about that, too. But yeah, it's the Sands of Salzar. Uh, we haven't even gotten, like, across the tip of the iceberg with, like, what this game is. Like, it really does incorporate a lot of the ideas from Mountain Blade Warband, like, controlling your own cities and your own areas and politics and stuff like that. I'd like to get a little bit further on in and check it out because, like, I've watched stuff on this, but, like, it's always, you know, in, like, Chinese and I never know what's going on. So, anyways, I'm excited to get to play it finally and I'm really thankful they sent the private beta over to me. Uh, I will see you all later. If you want to see more, let me know. Check out the Discord. Uh, check out the Twitch channel, and I will see you all tomorrow with something hot and fresh off the Indie Skillet. Bye, everybody.